Trammell Crowe was one of the most optimistic, bullish people you could meet. Margaret Crowe was a teacher and very much a lady. Trammell delighted in the success of others. He'd teach you to go for your aspirations and never let yourself down. My mom was somebody I could talk to. She was my friend. Trammell loved what he did, and he loved the people that he did it with. My dad came from a very humble background, born in East Dallas in a family of eight kids and father that had work sometimes, didn't have work much of the time. Even though he wanted to become well-educated, he couldn't afford to. And because his family was very religious in a conventional Christian environment, the church offered to pay for him to be educated under the condition that he become a minister, which would have been a completely different life. I think Dad did feel because he couldn't afford the level of education that a lot of his friends and his wife did, he overcompensated by lifelong study. Mother was born on the corner of Armstrong Avenue and Byron Avenue on the southern boundary of Highland Park. She came from generations of builders. Her grandfather on her father's side was the mayor of McKinney. On her mother's side, her great-great-grandmother was the pioneering family that, that started University Park in Highland Park. In the spring of 1939, Margaret lost her parents and became an orphan. And that had to be an immense tragedy for her being an only child. She was the recipient of the family house and the family fortune and the Doggett Grain Company and all of that had to be a lot for this junior in college at the University of Texas. I think that it really was the lesson that life is precious and Margaret was a survivor. Margaret and Trammell met in the summer of 1940. She was completely enraptured by this very smart, very ambitious young man who was working then at a bank here in Dallas. I think it was a whirlwind romance. They were married just two years later. In fact, I think at one point he sold his car to buy her engagement ring. I would idealize my parents' relationship. I would say it was damn close to perfect. The kind of couple that when they were apart, which they often were, they would miss each other a lot write notes and leave notes on pillows and lots of holding hands. You need a balance between hope and realism. It's gotta be a synthesis of all that, and I think they were. Mother saw her role as traditional mom and, and supporting him, very much that behind every great man there's a woman. Mom and dad were each better because of the other. They respected each other, they motivated each other, and they enjoyed each other. Their lives were broad and deep. She and he went everywhere around the world together. Mom could tell you everywhere in the third world to get your hair done, every little hut in Tahiti. Mom was a total Southern belle. One of the most attractive aspects of Trammell Crow Company was the ability to become a true legal partner. The spirit of partnership for Trammell was not just for himself alone, but because he was excited and thrilled that you were doing well. Part of the whole goal was to succeed as a group of people working together. The idea of if you earn a dollar, you share that dollar. I mean, it doesn't belong to me, it belongs to us. Trammell's work ethic was, uh, I think, also legendary. At that time, we'd work Saturday, but part of the reason we were at the office on Saturday was to see Trammell and have Trammell see us. And uh, often he would come by and visit with us, and that would make our weekend when Trammell put his arm around you, you had to listen because there was going to be something that was sage if he had his arm around you and was walking side by side. Trammell's favorite things to do when he saw you was to pat you on the back. And I don't mean just a little pat. It would be a pat that could drop you to your knees if you're not careful. Uh, and if you showed any sign of wincing at all, then you would just get another pat on the back until you were strong enough to withstand it. But we looked forward to those pats on the back, and that meant that he loved you and he cared about you. And in spite of whatever was happening in the business world, that you were, you were his son, you were his partner. He cared about what was happening in your life. 
Trammell Crow is known for the beginning part of his career where he actually developed the Trademark area and all of that industrial area along the western side of the city of Dallas and a little bit north of the central part of the city. The Trademark, all of the furniture marks, all of those buildings he was involved in developing and that was really, really an important part of the city and brought a lot of commerce to the city. When uh, Trammell needed to finance the World Trade Center, which was on a long-term ground lease from the Stimmons family, he approached John Stimmons and said, uh, John, I need to buy the fee so I can finance the building, and I'll offer you $6 million for the land. And John Stimmons says, no, it's only worth $4 million. So Trammell insisted on paying $2 million more because he felt so strongly about the value and the friendship and would not pay less than his value. There are many stories like that where he was overly generous and he's remembered for that. One reason that Trammell was very successful was his goal setting. But the primary reason was because he wasn't afraid to surround himself with people that were really, really smart, that were really, really driven, that had a high degree of principled thinking, even though at some point many have become or did become his competitors. John Stimmons called Dad the wild one, and the Anatole could be the personification of that. The Anatole was a great point of creativity for Dad. He explored convention kitchens all across the country to understand how do you do the kitchen right? How do you do the back of the house? It is a Crow family legacy to have that hotel, but also because it's not just a place where people sleep, there's great art there. There's a great opportunity for people to interact with each other around that art. And again, that's something that was totally different. Great art wasn't part of a hotel until he brought it into play in the Anatole. I think that my mom's shops out at the Anatole were a big deal in her life and therefore a big deal in all of our lives. I do remember one occasion when my wife and I were one-on-one -on -one with Trammell and Margaret and she was grinning from ear to ear about her store in the Anatole. And Trammell was just like a proud papa as he watched her, knowing how excited she was about that. Mom and Dad each had attributes that complemented the other. And they each brought a great deal to the relationship. They're both fun, vivacious, ready for the next adventure. Uh, they had similar aspirations in life and built a life headed in the same direction and moving forward together. They were so inspired by their travel and uh, really it was Trammell who would come back and purchase things through auction houses in New York. And after 30 to 40 years of travel, there were over 8,000 objects in their collection. And he was just voracious in his love of these objects. And he would even say, I don't know what it is, but these objects move me. That's what we call a heart connection in a collector. It really is a passionate feeling of joy from collecting these works and sharing them. Sharing them was as much a part of the collecting process. Mom was the one that said, uh, let's go create a museum. I think it was a significant and bold act on her behalf. When he built warehouses in the 50s and 60s, he put a little strip of grass in front of it, or a garden, and trees, and landscaping. And it might not have been much, but it made it a better property. One time he tried to have the city council put a program in place to put trees on Harry Hines Boulevard. One weekend, he just had his guys go out and start planting trees all along Harry Hines Boulevard and along Lemon. And today you can drive down, and occasionally you'll see one that survived and there'll be a pretty massive sycamore tree. And every time I drive by, I think about Trammell and that story. I think Dad's legacy um, really are his partners and their ripple impact into the world. He was a consummate risk taker. And if you look at his batting average over a long career, it would be remarkably high. What he would have cared about much more than any building would have been the company that he built and the people in the company and the lives that were influenced by the activities of the company. That would have mattered to him a million times more than any building. I think what Dad did in the business world is he brought his own integrity, his own sense of humanity. His legacy is a legacy of love. Once when I was uh, talking, Don and I were putting on one of our uh, uh, two-man acts at the Harvard Business School, uh, some 
kid on the back row back up there said with a voice I thought had a little bit of uh, irony in it or cynicism in it, asked me, he said, uh, Mr. Crow, what is the one thing which is the greatest element of success? When I knew in a flash what to say, but I was timid to say it. But after a, a long pause, I just said, well, what the dickens? I'm just going to say it. And you know what it is? It's love. It's the most powerful force in the world and will do more for us individually and as a company than anything else we can do. And I stand here uh, pouring out love to you all and telling you goodbye. Have a good trip home and I'll see you in your home and I'll see you back here soon, I hope.